Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Well, it's 2024 and I want to start the year off by giving you my thoughts on why I think the Canon EOS R might be a camera that you want to consider buying if you're looking at an RF mount camera in 2024. Okay, so the first reason is just the build quality of the camera. Um, now, this was my first mirrorless camera. I didn't try any of the Sony cameras. I've been a Canon shooter. And when this camera came out, I was excited to finally get a mirrorless camera in the Canon lineup. And I just really love the build quality of the camera. Um, it fits really nicely in the hand. The grip is nice and deep. Um, if you're someone like me that's got bigger hands, uh, you'll find that the camera really fits nicely. You don't have the problem with the pinky dropping off the bottom that you do with some of the newer mirrorless cameras from Canon. Um, like the EOS R7 and even the um, R6 Mark II which I own has that problem where yeah if you've got bigger hands like me uh, you can still hold the camera and stuff but you don't have that problem with the EOS R it has a nice thick sturdy grip um, it's also built very ruggedly um, I unfortunately did drop my camera but it never missed a beat um, it has a very tough exterior that wears well um, you regularly see these cameras come up for sale um, looking almost new and so I think just the build quality of this camera I think this is a camera that um, Canon really built to last and I think this will go down in the history of Canon cameras as one of those great uh, cameras like the 5D Classic or the 5D Mark II that um, just continues to keep going for years and years and years with people loving um, how it was built and how the files look. Okay, so number two is the image quality. And this is a big one for me. And this is actually the main reason why I kept the Canon EOS R for so long. Um, just the, the pictures out of that camera, they look fantastic, they really do. Um, it's 30 megapixels. Um, it's not the sharpest sensor in the world. Um, you do get sharp results from something like an R6 or an R6 Mark II or any of the new cameras an R5 but they just especially for portraiture the files have a certain look about them it's the same sensor from the 5D Mark IV uh, with some tweaking but if you've seen files from the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R they are very similar the color rendition and everything like that um, it's great also for landscape, I did a lot of landscape with it and even though it's maybe not the sharpest or the most high resolution sensor, the, the files just have something about them. I, I don't know what it is, but it's something that is just lovely. Um, the way it renders colors, warm colors, is just beautiful. Okay, so number three is, is just going to be the LCD and the viewfinder. Um, these are still some of the best, it's still got the best LCD I've ever had on, on a camera. And moving to my, what I've got now, the R7 and the R6 Mark II, I miss that, that back screen. Um, I've come to rely on shooting from the back screen more and more these days. And it has one of the best back screens um, out there. Uh, it's disappointing that Canon has reserved some of those features for the higher end like the high, higher end um, cameras like the R3 but um, if you're someone that shoots with the back screen a lot like this has one of the best back screens um, especially at this price point that you can get the viewfinder also is big and beautiful and although it suffers somewhat from lag um, it's really going to be a case dependent thing whether that's uh, an issue for you like for me shooting portraiture I never found it to be an issue uh, if you're shooting sports or something like that it's going to be a massive problem I wouldn't recommend the R for that if you're shooting landscapes also again not a problem and I just wait I just love the way that um, the image looks through the viewfinder and through the screen um, I don't know why but I I've struggled to fo to get the same look um, through the viewfinders of obviously the R7 which is much lower resolution and even the R6 Mark II um, there's something with the color rendition that I just prefer with the Canon EOS R um, number four is the is the file sizes so I think this sort of hits a sweet spot for me um, 
Now I shoot in C raw. Um, I have done for quite a while, and I think the 30 megapixel um, files for me are just sort of that sweet spot between having resolution and not having gigantic files. Um, I like the option of having a high resolution camera, but I often find that yeah, if you're shooting a lot, I don't think I shoot a ton, but I do. Sh you know, if you're going to a shoot, you might shoot one to two thousand um, photos to cull through, and when you're loading that into Lightroom and stuff, the bigger the files, the more it's going to weigh down your system and obviously the more storage you're going to have to use. So that might or might not be an issue for you, but I've always found that that 30 megapixels is uh, sort of a sweet spot for me and a good balance between resolution and file size. And number five is just the user experience. Um, now this comes down to things like the menu. Now you're going to find that the menu in the EOS R, if you're someone that's coming to mirrorless, is going to be a lot simpler than something like, say, uh, the newer cameras like the R7 and the R6 Mark II because there's just less options in there. Um, so you still might find that you need to um, learn some things about the autofocus system and whatnot, but it's going to be, it's not going to be quite as big a jump as if you're going to some of the new cameras with the dual pixel autofocus 2, which I find to be much more complicated and can take a few more steps to get your head around. Um, but yeah, I really, I, I still find that the, the, the menu system is easy to use. The autofocus system really works well. And um, I haven't had, I didn't have too many problems unless people were wearing glasses. I don't know why it has such problem, problems with glasses, but um, otherwise the menus, the autofocus system, just how the camera operates in general, I find to be um, really easy to use and enjoyable. Okay, so it's not all roses, guys. So here's five reasons why you might not want to buy the Canon EOS R in 2024. The big one, number one, I'm just going to go straight into it. It's the single card. Um, this is a deal breaker for so many people, for so many applications. Now, if you are not shooting professionally, if you're not getting paid to shoot, this isn't an issue. Don't worry about it. Don't let that put you off buying this camera. But if you're shooting anything where it's a once in a lifetime or you're going on a trip um, or you're shooting a wedding, God forbid, uh, having only one card is a big problem. It, it really is. Um, I really wish that Canon. When I bought this, when I bought the EOS R, I came from the 5D Mark III, which obviously had two card slots, a CF, a CF um, card, the old style, and an SD card. And even though I only ever used really the SD card, I loved having that redundancy there of of knowing that if I needed to shoot two cards, I could. Now, there's workarounds with this. You can just have a big card. That's what I did. I bought a 128 gigabyte card, left it in the camera, and then you can just um, connect USB-C and offload the files like that. That's what I would recommend. If you ever find you, if you have this camera or you buy this camera and you find yourself in a situation like that, that is best practice and that is what I would recommend doing. But for some people, this is just, it's, unfortunately this camera is going to be a non-starter and I really wish that Canon um, had included two card slots. If they had, I'd still own the camera and I'd still be shooting it honestly even now in 2024. So number two is the buttons. So there's just not a lot of them. Um, there's not a lot of buttons. There's no joystick. There's that horrible, um, what do they call it, the thumb dial slide thing which is just absolutely useless. I've seen some people say um, that they've found uses for it for ISO and stuff. I, Over the years I've tried many different um, thing, ways to use it and honestly I just I never found a way that suited my use case and I just found it a real pain. Um, so yeah, and it's not just the lack of buttons, but the customizability of the buttons. Um, when I compare it to my 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 newer cameras, my R7 and the R6 Mark II, I can fairly easily arrange buttons in a way that makes sense to me and gives me all the controls that I need. This isn't the case with the EOS R, 
and in a way it's a positive and a negative because it does simplify things and that's one of the things I used to love about shooting with the camera is that it was I could only use it in a more simple case scenario but it's going to be a problem if you're coming from a camera where you're used to having a lot of customizability of your buttons and being able to put your buttons wherever there is you can uh, there is you know buttons and you can assign them but um, it's not an extensive option of different things you can put on different buttons so that's a downside all right um, next is just going to be the 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 viewfinder lag okay so like I mentioned in the pros this for me wasn't such a big deal um, I did notice it when I first got the camera because I was shooting my kids a lot my kids were younger then and it was quite noticeable then because if you're tracking subjects you're going to see that lag um, that's why I would definitely not recommend this camera for wildlife sports really any sort of action um, it's just it's it's not the camera for that it's really a camera for portraiture landscapes that sort of more of a slow moving subject base um, so the, the lag is there it is noticeable um, but it's really going to be dependent on your case use and finally it's just going to be the fact that this is an older sensor and so you are going to get poorer ISO performance um, now that's uh, it's not by any means terrible I shot an engagement session on this just at the end of last year and I had no issues shooting in relatively good light I think this camera is very clean up to 1600 um, I never had any problems with it but I did not find it the ISO performance was much better when I went from my 5D Mark III to this if anything I sort of noticed it was maybe a little bit grainier but that was probably because of the high resolution files but this is going to be a solid performer I mean um, compared to even my my EOS R7 that I'm filming on now you're going to get much better um, dynamic range and noise performance than you would on some of the uh, like on a crop sensor crop sensor camera okay so just a bonus one here now I'm looking at this from a photography point of view but if you're doing any video um, I think that's a no-brainer on why you might want to skip this camera and look for something that's newer even if it was um, a crop sensor or something like the R7 just because the video on this is has a quite a large crop on it and the files the C log files I don't enjoy working with um, I used to shoot video on on the EOS R but I almost always shot it in like a standard profile or a, or a flat profile I almost never use C log I, I didn't find that it was flexible enough um, now other people have used it and have gotten great results with it so uh, for me for video it's a no-go um, I found it too hard to use but um, it is there it does have 4k but um, it would definitely not be my choice so that's it guys so there's some reasons why you might want to choose the Canon EOS R in 2024 ultimately I think it's a great camera um, and for the prices that you're seeing them now I think if you're looking for a camera to either be your first mirrorless camera or you're, try you're looking to go from um, a DSLR this is a great camera for value for money full frame great sensor reasonably good low light um, performance um, only has a one card slot but um, I've seen them here in Australia they go from between twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars and for, for the value that you're getting in the camera I think that that really is a, a great option and something that you should think about in 2024 if you're looking to buy um, go into mirrorless and specifically for Canon okay guys so I hope that's helped somebody um, this is a camera that I owned like I said I've shot extensively um, a camera that I really loved but in the end I ended up upgrading at the end of last year selling the camera which I really hated doing because uh, I just really loved the look of the files from the camera but um, I needed to move on as I'm growing professionally as a photographer and so I needed to sell the camera and put that money towards 
other cameras which you'll see reviews of coming up in the channel in the future. Okay guys, so that's it for today. Um, have a good one and shoot.